We're talking one to two years later at 1,000 pesos. Mm. Di ba tama? Parang ganun eh. So, ako naman Pilipino, ikaw naman. Worse, they've gone one stage higher. They're now selling us the players that are made in China, supposedly. Blu-ray pa, pero fake din na Blu-ray. <laughs> fake na player lang. For only 1,500. So, how can that even be genuine? Mm -hmm. I remember when I first bought my first DVD or CD. Di, di ba CD player noon, DVD? Mga 14, 15,000. Eh, ngayon, magkano lang? Yung mga orange? Pangalan orange, yan ang brand. May brand na nga eh. 1,200. Ganito kaliit. It's as big as this. Ladies and gentlemen, incidentally, here is a book, The Intellectual Property Code of the Philippines, Republic Act 8293, given to me by our guest today. Maybe if you want to know more about it. Let me see. Can I take the glare out of that? Is the light there? There you go. Where can you get this book, incidentally? Uh, the IP Philippines provides IP Philippines, copies. Yes. The IP Philippines. How do you get to the IP Philippines? Uh, the, uh, the IPO is located in 351 Hilpuyat Street. It's along Buendia, near Department Department of Trade and Industry, is that yes. it? It's but it's a DTI. DTI. Yes. But yes, this is a public document, so you yes. can download it in the internet. Oh, good, want. good, good. So you can download this, at least to help understand the legality. Yes, exactly. Uh, very briefly, I was just looking at it. I was just, I'm not a speed reader, but maybe I am. So I did look <laughs> at it very quickly a while ago. and. It's not very strict in the implementation of the law and the description of the law, it says it, but it's very difficult when it comes to the implementation and what to do for those violators. Exactly your problem now. How are you going to attack your problem? Actually, it's a progress, I think. I, I believe that it's, uh, work in progress. Yes, it's a work in progress. Yes. Even countries like the US and Canada and advanced countries like Japan, they have a problem with prior piracy. This is a universal problem that we all have to deal with. In the Philippines, it's a bigger problem because we're a developing country. And even, for example, the discussions with the World Intellectual Property Office, we have uh, a problem with the development versus the stronger protection of intellectual property. So as you can see, this is, not just common, uh, this is not just a problem here in the country. This is a global problem. This is a discussion between the developing countries and the Center for Innovation, like Japan and the US. Is there a relationship between the country's progress or economic standpoint? For example, America, you mentioned Japan, now I'm mentioning Singapore and mm -hmm. Hong Kong, which have become part of the developing countries, what we call the second world before. Well, not the second world, the first world, third world. Mm -hmm. We're now called underdeveloped, developing, and first world, right? Mm -hmm. When you go up to stage two or develop, maybe, so is there a direct relationship to the economic position of the country versus intellectual property? So those who do well yes. need not be victims of it, and they eradicate it. But being third world, talaga, those who do well would, uh, would force uh, stronger intellectual property creation, uh, protection. But of course, those developing countries like us. So why do you enforce intellectual property? We just let it be. Let us all <laughs> buy it. <laughs> you, you know, in the... <laughs> in, in, third world, we are supposed to be, right? In the academia, there is a discussion between uh, do we prioritize development or do we prioritize intellectual property protection? What would be the answer that is, to that? Oh, it's, it's a long debate. If you go to the World Intellectual Property Office, there is a committee now discussing uh, this topic. And we have regular meetings there to discuss how can we merge development with intellectual property creation. Of course, there should always be a balance because countries like the Philippines, Brazil, Argentina, they want to have access to patents that are registered in other countries. Especially medicine. Yes, especially medicine. Of course, there's a moral issue here, like as you were saying a yeah, while yeah, ago. Right? I agree yeah, with that. Exactly. Medicine. But in the other alternatives, I don't think, I think you're right, we should respect it, but how do you respect it when the system is corrupted? Uh, difficult, <laughs> It's very difficult. Very, very yes, difficult. it's very difficult. That's why here in, in the Intellectual Property Office, we're in for the awareness program, educating the public. This is yeah, what it should know, be. That's about it, awareness. Yes. Mm. And we stand to benefit more if we, we have a regime of a stronger intellectual property respect and protection. Should the president understand mm -hmm. the issues of intellectual property? Should senators and congressmen or the legislation understand the meaning of this? Yes, it is. Do you very think they understand it? <laughs> <laughs> there are two different questions. It's huh? to, <laughs> yeah, it's very difficult to generalize. But yes, the president should make this as a priority. Because in other countries, they became very successful because of protecting intellectual property. Like, as we've mentioned, Japan, they're very advanced right now. And that is primarily because they support patent. They support innovation in their mm -hmm. country. And once the uh, inventors are protected, they're encouraged to do more invention because you know, they're going to profit from the invention and we have to reward them for doing this to the public. Yeah. And this is two-way. We give protection to the intellectual property creators in return for them giving this to the public after 20 years of exclusive ownership. Yeah. That's in medicine. Uh, I'm going to have to cut you there. We're going to have to take a short break. We'll be right back. 
Stay with us if you want to learn more about this. Case in point, I'd like to bring in when we come back, there's called the Phil's Cap, if you're familiar with this. It's a Filipino composer's something, ek, 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 ek. We're in there supposed to promote or protect the musicians, the composers in the Philippines, but in effect, what they do is they charge you every single establishment when you play music into the public, whether it be radio and or tape music. And for what purpose? To keep it themselves or you're supposed to pay it back to the composers and those who have a heart or a a part to play with the Phil's cap. That's exactly what's happened to that. And that's legal. That was legislated. Is that what's going to happen here? Anyway, stay with us. We'll come back. Hello, my name is Harry Tumbuatka. We're back. We've got with us attorney Lope Manuel and attorney Mary Jane Seguita. And the topic we're talking about is intellectual property, of course, in relationship with the Philippines and the global community. Let's go right back into that issue. Anong maganda gawin? Uh, okay, we understand we are violators in the Philippines. Yes. We have a propensity to violate all the different products under intellectual property, be it for medicine or apparel, software, intellectual, even music. So we do everything basically and we nagnanakaw tayo. Our neighbors have upgraded themselves but the funny thing is habang gumaling ang ekonomiya nila, sila rin hindi na rin sila nagpapirate. Mm -hmm. Pero gumaling na ekonomiya nila, tumaas na rin sila, parang hindi na rin nila kin kinailangan or na-afford na nila yung genuine products. Where do we stand in the Philippines? And should we just let it go? Shouldn't you just let it go? Or should you continue? And why should you continue? And what's going to be your strategy? It's a lot Dami of questions. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. It's a lot of work for the Philippines. Yes, because a lot of people still don't understand what is intellectual property. Right now, the direction of the intellectual property office of the Philippines is to go on stronger enforcement. That's why uh, here uh, Sarah has this uh, program. Uh, she will discuss it with you later about the stronger enforcement scheme that we're promoting here in the Philippines through our, of course, the, through the direction of our new director general. Sarah, yes. uh, your scheme. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My scheme. Okay. Uh, uh, based on the scheme, a uh, reviewing, of course, the culture of the Philippines, we should see it as a, uh, an economy. Uh, we are a people with the potential to have a great copyright industry. Much like the United States, we have a lot of creative talent here. We have a lot of um, uh, intelligent scientists and engineers who can mm -hmm. go on to develop innovations. But I agree. Under the leadership of our uh, new director general, we want the IP Philippines to have more. Who's key. the new director general? Uh, director Blanca Flor. Okay, Blanca yeah. Flor, yes, go ahead. Formerly of the. Until DOJ. tomorrow, di ba? My turn po siya. Independent main turn niya. Apa. Ah, sige, si Blanca Flor, go ahead. Mm -hmm. so, so we want the IP Philippines to have a stronger, stronger role in enforcement, which means that. Uh, having IP Philippines uh, enforce these laws, go out on raids, and then be more active in prosecuting and mm -hmm. setting precedent when it comes to who should you raid? The peddler? I mean, don't kill the messenger, diba? Don't shoot the messenger, as there's a saying, diba? Kusina nagpapadala dapat. So, how do you, who do you go after? Unfortunately, the peddlers are the first casualties in this. Kung naman you're shooting the messenger, eh, kung yeah, naman, oh. But uh, that's what happens. Nagtatrabaho, nagkahanap buhay lang naman yung mga nagbebenta niyan. Yes, that's what yeah. they say, nagkahanap buhay lang ako, eh. But we're working also with NBI and different government agencies to look into uh, the the perpetrators themselves, the, the source of the piracy, like the producers, those who are backing them up. Where is this factory? Kung saan nagagaling mismo yung mga pirated goods? But how are you going to go after China? It's They're bigger than the Philippines. At doon naman ginagawa lahat yun eh. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, moral. I, I won't go. Perception. Mm. China, China, China. You, you go after, who do you go after? The guy who imported a duplicator machine? The guy who duplicates it? Diba? Uh, who do you go after? The guy who financed it? Or the guy who made the, the duplicating machine even available to the public? Uh, I don't know. Who do you go after? Everyone. Everyone. That's it's really, yes, it's they're really online everyone. Online. Yes. And yes, right now, the direction of IPO is to really be proactive in, you know, but going after everyone. Then why do we everyone. see it in supermarkets? That's why we're doing the campaign. In Alabang, yes. where I go, uh, uh, South Supermarket. Uh -huh. At mm -hmm. the end, right before you exit in the escalator going down, mm -hmm. there's a big store there. You can get Microsoft, Oracle, you can any. Mm -hmm. Software yun, ay, hindi, hindi, hindi DVDs. Pag DVD, gusto mong pumunta ka sa The Ruins, sa, sa, <laughs> ano, sa BF. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not one store. You're talking about a hundred stores. Yes, Doon, makukuha mo na rin yung mga fake na rubber shoes, na mga Nike na fake. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, you know, you don't even have to go that far.